and all potential. paths lead to Bitcoin. We are, I'm not calling for a collapse of the economy per se, or, or the financial system. There are definitely things that can, can be band-aid solutions, mm -hmm. but no matter what, the 100% certain outcome is fiat debasement because they need to continue to print more fiat to pay the debt burden. Okay, as long as the market accepts that, the system can continue. But the only 100% certain conclusion is the debasement of fiat, which means you need to set an investment portfolio that protects you against that 100% certainty. Canadian Bitcoin enthusiast and former hedge fund manager Greg Foss recently spoke with the Understanding Macro podcast about the global debt crisis, currency debasement, and the inevitable end of the fiat Ponzi. Foss, who has spent over 30 years trading high-yield credit in the financial markets, warns that the ultimate unraveling of the fiat Ponzi scheme is imminent, and that Bitcoin is the only viable insurance against this possibility. Among Bitcoin enthusiasts, Foss is well known for his insightful tweets, in which he frequently comments on the plight of the US and Canadian economies. Because of his extensive background in macroeconomics and risk management in the financial markets, he was bound to approve of Bitcoin. Bitcoin, in Foss's opinion, represents the most asymmetrical chance for commercial and financial gain he has ever encountered. Despite his extensive background in the financial sector, spanning decades, Foss also touched on the unstable state of the U.S. economy at the time of the interview. He says that the current interest rate climate is similar to the Volcker sledgehammer of the 1970s. Foss essentially makes the same point, except that the debt spiral has grown so large that economic growth is insufficient to keep up with it. The interest payments on the debts, which Foss claims are excessive, are another problem. The problem has always been the system. But the system itself has never been as levered as it is now. So what happens as you increase the leverage in the system, the frequency and severity of the downturns increase. Okay. And so, but let's be, be clear. The fiat system has always been this way. And history will tell you that fiats always fail for this exact reason. Mm -hmm. because they print money in the times of the Romans, they clipped the edges of the coins and took out uh, the, the gold and the silver from the coins. And the, so fiat systems always fail. And we're just recreating that same problem uh, in a modern age with central planning that is not just central planning of, let's say, the Roman Empire. It's the central planning of every single fiat country in the world mm -hmm. uh, all operate on the same model. So. We can blame the system. We shouldn't be surprised because those systems always fail. Uh, but then there's a great reset and you start fresh again, but the pain to start fresh is monumental. And people just forget that, you know, these crises have happened over time when fiat fails. And you can look in Venezuela right now or Argentina that's defaulted four times in my career. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we're not used to it in G7 countries. And here's the problem. It's now caught up with the G7 countries because when in the 1980s, when inflation was really high, there was a Fed chairman by the name of Paul Volcker who did raise interest rates to close to 20%, to 0%. Mm -hmm. But the difference was the federal debt at that time was far reduced from the current level of over 120% of gross domestic product. At that time, it was around half of that. Mm -hmm. And it's, you can, you can actually raise interest rates when your gross, when your uh, total debt to GDP is there because the interest expense on the debt will grow, but it won't bankrupt the whole system. Now we're at a point where total debt to GDP is 120% which is to say when you raise interest rates even to 5%, the interest expense on the existing debt is growing so quickly, you can't keep up with the expansion, the organic expansion of the debt. And that's where we are right now. Mm -hmm. So the system is to blame, but we are now at a point where we can't reverse it. You see, after the great financial crisis, there was the chance to be able to reduce this mathematically. I don't think the political 
uh, wherewithal existed to reduce to reduce the debt. But mm -hmm. mathematically, you could have achieved that. Now it's impossible to achieve that. We are at a point where the debt spiral is so large that no matter what you do, you can't reduce that debt burden enough. The economy can't grow fast enough to keep up with that expanding debt burden. It's mathematically mm -hmm. impossible. You can have a bolted down asset called real estate. It's just not that portable, mm -hmm. but people have done okay in real estate. And it's not really that the value of your house has gone up. You could probably look back and say, you know what? My marginal utility of a house right now is about the same as it was in the 1960s. The difference is it takes more units of account to buy the same marginal utility because the value of that unit of account has debased so much over the past 60 years, right? My parents bought their first house in like 1960. They paid under $20,000 for a house that would now be worth easily over a million and a half dollars. And that's nothing to do with the margin of utility of that house. And it's all to do to the purchasing power of the unit of account. Assuming I am not giving financial advice, I'll just tell you what I do. I own hard assets. Yeah. I own real estate. I own gold. I own silver. I own Bitcoin, the best hard asset there is, but I'm not all in on Bitcoin. So I'm close to 60 years old. Um, and if I was 30 or younger again, yeah, you're up against it a bit, but maybe you don't actually have to buy that house that everybody always told you to aspire to because what happens if you buy that house and the world goes to heck in a handbasket you don't want to be bolted down to a fixed object like a house uh if you can't get out of the country because you can't sell your house or whatever i'm not saying everyone wants to leave canada but that is one of the considerations when you own a hard asset you have to understand portability liquidity transferability all the things and if i was under 30 i would actually focus on accumulating a given percent of my net worth in bitcoin because bitcoin i believe is the best asymmetric trade opportunity and investment opportunity i've ever seen in managing risk for over 35 years i was primarily a credit trader uh, and so junk bonds and distressed debt, but it's no different than evaluating risk return and getting an anticipated return on your investment. Okay. Every investment is the same. You evaluate the risk. You say for this level of risk, I need to anticipate a return of X. And if the risk is twice as high. The, re the return should be 2x, okay? Like, I mean, that's a rule of thumb that you have to increase your return as the risk increases. And the funny thing is that Bitcoin appears to be risky, but the appearance of risk versus true risk are two totally different things, okay? So I actually believe Bitcoin to be incredibly unrisky. In fact, I believe Bitcoin is insurance. And since it's insurance against the Fiat Ponzi, I advocate everybody needs to own some Bitcoin or else they're actually taking higher risk by owning zero. One surefire way to weather any economic storm that may be brewing around the world is to have a sizable portion of your investment portfolio in Bitcoin. It's the only tangible asset that can weather the inevitable devaluation and collapse of the world's leading currencies. How much of your savings do you have in Bitcoin right now? In the space provided below, please leave your responses and thoughts on the interview with Greg Foss. Thank you for watching Market Empire. We hope you found this video informative and helpful in understanding the potential benefits of investing in Bitcoin. If you have any questions or would like to learn more about finance and investing, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to stay up to date on our latest content. And as always, stay smart and stay ahead of the game.